हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू टू मन्नान सी लर्निंग प्रोग्राम विद वन अनदर लेक्चर इन जेनेटिक्स इफ यू आर न्यू टू माय चैनल देन यू कैन विजिट टू द प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स बाय द लिंक व्हिच इज बीन शेयर्ड विद यू गाइस इन टुडे लेक्चर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट साइटोप्लाज्मिक and also called as extra nuclear inheritance so if you see in this particular picture so this is uh, shown here is the ovum as you can see here and these are the sperms out of several sperms i think you mostly aware that only one sperm can penetrate inside this ovum and then it's basically produced a fertilized egg the sperm uh, contributes its genetic material uh, in terms of 23 chromosomes and similarly the ovum which has got its own um, genetic material also contributes 23 chromosomes so in all together it is produce a 46 chromosome this i have explained in my previous uh, genetic lecture series that uh, how many chromosomes which are present what is what to mention in this uh, today's lecture and that's what we will be going to discuss about here is that is uh, the as i said extra nuclear inheritance so you might be wondering that why i'm showing you this picture this picture from where the fusion of a sperm and ovum the life starts that is this zygote from one single cell stage it's produced two single uh, two cell stage then 4 8 16 and so on what is important to know here is that the contribution of the ovum that is the cytoplasm is very huge it is enormous the genetic material is being contributed by the sperm and the genetic materials from the ovum is also contributed but even before the fusion of the sperm or you can say when it's enters inside the ovum these cytoplasm the cytoplasm of the ovum consists of several materials and one of the important materials which i'm trying to show you are by dots or by these small circles likes the proteins and the transcriptional programs like rna which are been present even before you can say the sperm is entering these proteins and this rna is very important because they basically uh, works or regulate the expression of the genes for the early embryogenesis processes very early embryogenesis processes to give you an analogy to make you understand better you can consider that the uh, sperm is like a delegate which basically comes with some information but the controlling authority for the initial phase is the ovum the ovum decides that which genes has to be expressed which genes has not to be expressed and this information which is present in the maternal site okay this is also comes in a preview of a very important and very interesting and comparatively new fields which we called as epigenetics the epigenetics we might cover in some other lecture but what is most important and worth to mention this that this epigenetics is very much important for cloning the cloning if someone is doing a cloning of certain cattle or certain animals then this epigenetic program is very important if this programming is not been done properly the cloning experimental fails like so far if you uh, probably i guess you heard about the clone dolly here this dolly uh, is been created by a process of which we call as somatic cell nuclear transfer and you will be surprised to know that there are roughly 276 failure experiments which was been done means there were failures which is there and after this failure then it was become successful 
so the point which i'm trying to make and make a foundation for today's lecture is that these epigenetics play very important role and this epigenetics which is contributed here by the maternal factors or the maternal uh, ovum here okay and we are going to discuss in today's lecture about the chloroplast inheritance so now let's uh, look here uh, a particular cell type which has been shown let me change my color code so if you see in this particular paint diagram of a cell where the most important part has been shown the nucleus but at the same time you can also see there are cell membrane and several other organelles which has been present like golgi bodies if it is a plant cell then there will be a cell wall then it is all the whole material or the extra uh, nuclear regions we call them as a cytoplasm and in this you also see two very important organelles one is a mitochondrium or mitochondria and one is this chloroplast this mitochondria and chloroplast are very unique because they consist of their own genetic material and this genetic material which we are talking about this genetic material is different from the cellular main genetic material which is nucleus if you take a human cell okay the genome size of because we already sequence the genome gene, genome the scientists have sequence is roughly 3000 billion bases okay 3000 billion bases and if you consider here as a mitochondria and if i am specifically talking about the human mitochondria then it is something you can say is around 16.5 kb okay so this is billion base pairs mean uh, which is if you come 3 into 10 to the power 9 and you can see the difference 16.5 kb means 10 to the power 3 bases so see the huge difference but what is worth to mention here is that inside a cell there are roughly like 100 mitochondria which is present this mitochondria is also called as the power of house of the cell you probably know about this from your biochemistry lectures uh, they uh, oxidative phosphorylation is been involved they generate atp so i'm not going to talk about the what the functions of mitochondria but we will try to understand in terms of its contribution maybe in some other lecture today we will only focus about the chloroplast inheritance similarly a chloroplast is also which consists uh, of a chlorophyll gives the green color to the, the uh, leaves of the plants and if we take a one of the model like tobacco plant the chloroplast genome which is consist of here is uh, around 150 Uh, kb so you can again imagine that uh, the size is comparatively less but they do contribute to the inheritance pattern and this inheritance pattern we name them as extra nuclear the term coming here is the extra nuclear because they are other than the nucleus which we are talking about something which is present chloroplast or mitochondria that's why it is called as extra nuclear in some places you do also find that it is also called as cytoplasmic inheritance and the reason for the cytoplasm because this is again other than the nucleus uh, which is been used okay so uh, we will be so what i am going to talk about here that what is chloroplast inheritance what it contribution how it is different from the mendelian inheritance pattern because this we call as a non mendelian inheritance pattern the importance or its implication i introduce in my previous lecture where i said that this uh, uh, cytoplasm plays a very important role for the development process like for example in ovum this proteins and the rna which is predetermines they help in uh, determining which genes to be expressed the same way is a maternal uh, effect comes into picture so i will be describing those definitions also so you can expect that how we can solve a problem 
uh, that uh, uh, if something in some competitive exams they ask about chloroplast inheritance or mitochondrial inheritance so how we can able to solve that so that's what we are going to talk about okay so as i mentioned here that the uh, little bit introduction uh, that these E patterns of inheritance as you can see here it deviate from the mendelian pattern of inheritance in mendelian inheritance in briefly if i have to talk about that it is basically transmission of you can say um, characters or the genes or in terms of chromosome is from one uh, generation to the another generation okay and we mostly talk about there is is related to the Uh, nuclear genome so that's how the mendelian inheritance patterns we basically work upon but when we talk about the inheritance pattern other than nucleus we talk uh, tell we uh, talk about the extra nuclear inheritance and in extra nuclear inheritance we specifically study in the genetic classes mitochondria and the chloroplast inheritance okay uh they are also like some terminologies which is used like maternal effect which required say dedicated one more lecture so i will talk about that maybe in future lecture maternal effect and also the epigenetics it will take a different uh, lecture where uh, like the embryonic development process that how it works what it its role over there uh, what is uh, basically the x chromosome inactivation of uh, the or you can say uh, the expression of certain genes whether it is uh, come from paternal side or maternal side how they affect that requires uh, another uh, discussion so maybe in future lecture you will come across that so now let's focus about this chloroplast inheritance or extra nuclear inheritance type okay so i already explained this terminology so it is been mentioned here okay so extra nuclear inheritance often you will uh, see that it is written in some of the books as cytoplasmic inheritance you will also see that it is mentioned as organelle inheritance you will also see or uh, come across that it is mentioned as a uniparental inheritance and when we it is called as a uniparental means from one parent contribution which is coming like in case of ovum we are seeing for the initial phases it is towards the maternal side so that's why if it is coming from the female side then we call them as a maternal inheritance okay the inheritance is actually the same and or if it is coming from the father side then we also called as a paternal inheritance pattern this is actually present in uh, some plants it has been shown that the contribution is coming from the paternal side not from the maternal side okay so that is one exception but guess this terminology is often been used over there okay then you will find the words like as in previous slides also written that is the maternal effect okay maternal effect so i would like to tell you here the maternal effect is not equivalent so that's why i put a cross mark to the maternal inheritance pattern it is not equivalent maternal inheritance is simply is a uniparental inheritance types where the contribution from the maternal or the female counterpart is been transmitted from its uh, next generation okay and when we say it is a mendelian genetics or mendelian inheritance pattern then we con consist of both con uh, nuclear genome contribution that is from maternal as well as from the paternal side okay so that's how you uh, come across uh, this terminology now uh, you might find some other information also but this is often used that's i thought important that's why i mentioned here the maternal inheritance pattern or you can say extra which is often used as i say extra nuclear cytoplasmic because mostly it is been found from the maternal side that's why it is you find often be used as it is maternal inheritance okay so the maternal inheritance this term uh, uh, first time you can say reported in 4 o clock plant okay 4 o clock plant 4 o clock plant the which is also called as mirabilis jalapa okay and it is by uh, uh, karl korins karl korins is also the person who basically was given a credit 
for rediscovery of the Mende uh, Mendelian inheritance as well. So, he first time actually used this and observed this pattern of inheritance in 4 o'clock plant or also called as Mirabilis Jilapa. So, Carl Korens uh, comes into picture. So, he discovered this and as he mentioned that this is a non Mendelian inheritance pattern. Again, I am repeating the same terminology that is it is coming from the maternal side that is the female side it is coming. So, you can see in this particular picture a beautiful flower of Mirabilis Jalapa has been shown and in this particular picture you can see that the on in the same flower uh, this is shown as your yellow and magneta color uh, is there. Okay, So, two different types of coloring pattern which you can see and these types of coloring pattern is called as variegated or variegation okay variegated or variegation this is not only present in uh, flowers but they often been found in terms of leaves also this variegated pattern in some of the even ornamental plants you will find this uh, variegated uh, pattern uh, in the leaf color now the question arises why it is so the obvious reason uh, is basically uh, if you are specifically talking about the leaves it means that is it is contributed by the chlorophyll but besides chlorophyll uh, there are certain other granules which are present inside the cells and it is also called as plastids the term often used as plastids is consist of like leucoplast okay it consists of amyloplast okay amyloplast it also consists of your uh, chloroplast that's how this terminology is comes into picture like i think i have a diagram to show you here so let me show here so i will come back here so the plastic devil uh, plastic family as you can see here it is chloroplast which you can see here amyloplast which basically stores the granules the chromoplast which consists of the carotenoids like uh, some of the fruits they consist most of this chromoplast like the red color of your uh, tomatoes you can see there are certain leucoplasts which doesn't consist of anything there is a etioplast the proplast is all they develop from this because of these storage granules or this organelles which has been present there are different types of coloring patterns is observed in case of leaves in case of the fruits in case of the flowers uh, over there okay so that's how uh, basically it comes now coming back to here what we are discussing about Carl Korens that his discovery and it was shown here in case of the Mirabilis jilapai flower is been shown and as I was mentioning that it is some of the I hope you have seen this plant it, this is often been found in the gardens okay now in this particular plant you can see the leaves could be green okay so green pattern as you can see here or it could be white okay so it could be completely green like you can see here it is complete green okay or it could be a mixture of green and white as you can see here it is a mixture that's the variegated pattern and this ornamental part now why that is occurring i have another picture to show you here so if you see a this particular leaf which has been shown here this is like a more dark in color this is light green in color and it is having no green in color or white why this is so in the same leaf tissue if we are talking about why this is happening because this cell types is there is no chlorophyll is been present and uh, uh, chloroplast which is been present obviously then chlorophyll is not present this is having less number of you can say chloroplast and this is having more number of chloroplast so if you remember i mentioned in the beginning that mitochondria inside a cell their number is like if you say this is a nucleus so uh, this is nucleus let's say there are several mitochondria which is been present right that's what i was mentioning similar to this let me change the color code to make it a different color so let's say this is the chloroplast right this is let's say chloroplast similarly a cell consists of different numbers of chloroplast 
and other storage granules could also be present inside the cell types and that gives you different coloring patterns different kinds of storage materials which can be stored over there this probably explain this is the cellular explanation of your variegated phenotype now most often which has been taught in uh, this uh, classes is that how this pattern is been transmitted so you have to understand it is very simple to understand that what we uh, do in mendelian genetics like if a female is been crossed with a male and let's say this female is having a green leaf color okay green leaf color and say let's say this male is having a white leaf color let's say just take a uh, arbitrary example all the progeny that is the f1 progeny will be green in color thus this is a scenario number 1 why because all the chloroplasts from the ovum the maternal side is been transferred to the offspring the contribution of the male part is only the nuclear genome no contribution from the cytoplasm whether they contribute or not there is another discussion and usually taught in higher studies but just for sake of our discussion we consider that there is no contribution from the uh, chloroplast or you can say uh, the cytoplasm from the maternal side and that's why it becomes green if we take a another cross or scenario number 2 where we consider that a female which is having a white leaf color okay and then it is been cross with a male which is green leaf in color okay and uh, by the way uh, i would like to tell you that green uh, means if we say if we denote the gene for this genotype as capital g and g and say white as small g and g so a heterozygous plant a heterozygous plant if it is a nuclear type of genome if you are talking about then it will be capital g and small g that's how we study in mendelian pattern but you have to understand this is a non mendelian inheritance pattern all the cytoplasm is been contributed from the female that is the maternal side that's what i'm trying to explain so in the f1 progeny f1 progeny let me pause can you guess i know this is not a live class but can you guess if you are listening to this lecture those who said it is white yes 100% correct this will be white in you can say uh, uh, all leaves will be white in color the reason for that is that the contribution is from the maternal side so this is a simple case scenario where to understand how it's work but there is one another phenomena which took place which is also called as heteroplasmy okay heteroplasmy heteroplasmy means and we are considering that this is green or this is white is only because of this that is the 100% of the chloroplast is been transferred from the maternal side but however even though cytoplasm is from the maternal side or the uh, the female part but all this chloroplast sometime is not been transferred to the next generation maybe let's say if we say there are 100 chloroplast so there is a possibility that uh this out of this 100 chloroplast there is only um, transfer is like 80 uh, chloroplast can be transferred that is one phenomenon you have to understand the another thing which you have to understand that inside a cell the cytoplasm consist of a chloroplast maybe mixture of chloroplast which has been present mixture of chloroplast means that a chloroplast which is totally perfectly all right means is green in color but there could be some mutation and they may not consist of that chloroplast in that that is one possibility or there is also possibility that these been transferred as leucoplast means which is having no chlorophyll in content so maybe the contribution of this cytoplasm that is the chloroplast is 80 and this f1 individual or the f1 progeny might receive 20 of this as leucoplast so in this case 
if that is a case if you are referring so the leaf which you will see here and let me take a bold color so let's say this is a leaf okay this leaf may consist of a patches and this patch of the color which you see here is could be white and that type of patch of color is called as a variegated leaf i hope i try to understand uh, make you understand that why you are getting a green type of color why you are getting a light green type of color why you are getting a completely white leaf or flowers over there this all depends upon the transmission of the chloroplast which is present in the cytoplasm or leucoplast or other pigment granules to the next generation like for example if we see this particular uh, flower Uh, which is having a two types of color uh, color pattern so probably this is consist of the pigments which is mostly is yellow in color but at the same time it's also receive some of the same flower here with tissue if you're talking about also receive a magnetar type of coloring and both are been expressed and that's why you get a mixture of the color this type of phenomenon is called as a heteroplasmy what it its relevance which we will talk about most likely our next lecture where i will be talking about the uh, mitochondrial inheritance pattern the mitochondrial inheritance pattern is very important because these are responsible for several diseases there are thousands of diseases which is just due to defect in the mitochondria has been reported Okay, so we required a particular whole lecture to devote it, but in essence, what I explain, let me summarize before I end this. I talk about the definition of the chloro, uh, the cytoplasmic inheritance, the extra nuclear inheritance, the organal inheritance. I introduce to you the terminology. What is the contribution of the ovum? in terms of the epigenetics in terms of the developmental process i also introduce to you a terminology which is called as a maternal effect and how it is different from maternal inheritance and that requires even further discussion that how it has been different and which requires a further lectures to describe about that i also introduce and try to explain who discovered this maternal inheritance that is called coerence what is a variegated leaves how this inheritance pattern which is basically green white or you can say mixture of a green white you basically observed that i basically explained in today's lecture so i uh, would like to end here and i will thank you for listening to uh, this lecture uh, i will be coming uh, with the maternal inheritance Uh, uh maternal effect and i will be also coming with the mitochondrial inheritance pattern very important topic so please stay tuned if you like my uh, lecture please put the uh, like button and subscribe